we're going to be talking about credibility. We're going to be discussing how we need to have credibility. We're going to discuss the credibility that the Bible has. I'd like to start off with a story I heard about a woman named Jane. <clears throat> Jane liked to hike, and she got to go on her dream vacation to Alaska. People who like to hike, who like the outdoors, they love Alaska and just the northern parts of North America. And so she went up there, and it was a beautiful morning, her first day out there. And she, as she looked outside, she could not resist going out on a hike. And so she got her stuff together and went out on an early morning hike and enjoyed every minute of it. That was until she entered into a clearing as she was getting closer to returning to civilization, and she's confronted face to face with an enormous, brown, angry bear. Now nearby there was a, uh, a diner, and it was a, there was a fence at the foot of a hill that the diner was sitting on, and the people looked outside of the diner and saw the scene of this woman standing in horror, petrified at the sight of this bear. So they all ran out to the fence, and they were just, they didn't know what to do. But then one brave man stepped up in front of the fence and he started barking commands to the woman. He said, this is a 1,200 pound grizzly bear. You need to stand firm, assert yourself, be confident, show your teeth to it and snarl. This will trigger its flight response. And if that doesn't work, walk up to it and box it on the ears. One woman, impressed by the advice he was given, leaned over and said, sir, are you a forest ranger? And he said, no, but I did stay in a Holiday Inn, Inn Express last night. <laughs> Old commercial, but I think it has a very valid point. You wouldn't want somebody from a Holiday Inn Express who stayed at a Holiday Inn Express telling you what to do when faced with a grizzly bear. You want the forest ranger. That's because he's got credibility. He knows what he's doing. He's been trained to do what he did. Credibility is a thing of trust, and when you hear somebody speak confidently and seem like they know what they're doing, lots of times we give them credibility. Other times we know who they are, and that's what gives, us cred gives them credibility to us. Uh, for instance, when I was in middle school, when I was a sixth grader, I couldn't, be a, I couldn't compete on the wrestling team at Glenwood Middle School when I was in sixth grade, but I was able to participate in the practices, and I was their team manager. And one of the coaches out there, he was the drill partner and get this, of the number one wrestler in the world who at the time was wrestling for the University of Finland. And that man's name was Miron Karshalova. It's unbelievable. Somebody like that wrestled at NAIA uh, at the time. It was, it was the 90s. And uh, we were doing a drill. Uh, we were doing a workout. And they told us at the end of the workout, if we finished up early, to ask the coaches uh, what to do next. And uh, my drill partner and I, we finished up earlier than everybody else. And we were going to wait a few seconds to see if everybody else would finish. They didn't. So after a little bit, we asked the coach. We said, sir, what do we need to do next? He said, he thought about it a second. He said, well, you can do push-ups. You can do sit-ups. You keep doing what you're doing. Or what you can do is you can put your hands on top of your head, sit down on the mat, and you can walk yourself around in circles. Now, to me, I knew Miran, who was this person's drill partner, and I knew he had lots of weird jokes. I never seen this one before. And so I thought to myself, okay, well, this is intriguing. This is something new. I'll, I'll give it a try. So I sat down on the mat and I started, I put my hands on my head and started walking in circles, kind of like a crab. And uh, the coach then walks up to me a few minutes later, Bill, what are you doing? And I'm thinking in my mind, well, I'm looking like a fool walking around in circles like a crab, like you told me to. And he said, that was a joke. <laughs> so... I gave him all, all of my trust because I believed that because of who his drill partner was that he wouldn't lead me astray, but I didn't know that he was a joker as well. <laughs> Credibility is all about trust. That's something that is very important for us to have when we give somebody the opportunity to lead us and to show us what to do. And likewise with the Bible. Jerry read a scripture this morning that I'm going to read again, and that's Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 4. So I'm going to turn there again. I'm going to read it again and, uh, uh, and then kind of dissect it a little bit. So Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 again. It says, In the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets 
at many times in various ways, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his power and word, powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. So before Jesus, what this is telling us is that there were lots of prophets that had come before him. And uh, they, they all had credibility, not of their own, but given to them by God. So you have Moses, you have Deborah, you have Samuel. And I'm going to zone in on Moses here specifically for a moment because he came in at a very crucial time in biblical history. Namely, uh, the, the, ex, the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. Now, I want you to think about everything he did. He provided plagues and miracles before the people that showed everyone that his message was authentic and true. They could trust and follow him. But let's imagine for a moment, let's say that Moses leads the Israelites out of Egypt. They come to the Red Sea, and he raises up the staff, and nothing happens. And then let's say that the Egyptians close in on them, kill a number of them. Moses and a few others escape. Do you think that those people are going to want to follow Moses anymore? Probably not. He's lost all of his credibility at that point. But we know that this event did happen, that he did split the Red Sea, that God split the Red Sea, and that they crossed through and they continued to follow Moses. Yeah, it was rocky, but nonetheless, they saw that Moses was indeed a prophet of God as evidenced by the signs he performed. <clears throat> there is a pastor um, that I've heard of. He predicted the end of the world, that it would come in 2011, 2012, 2013. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, he is now predicting that the end of the world will happen on June 9th, 2019. Are you scared? At least we know he's got credibility, right? <laughs> so I don't think we have to be too worried about that. <laughs> Why is the Bible credible? The Bible is credible because it accurately describes the world's events as they actually happened. Not painting a fairy tale picture of what happened but actually describing specific things that happened. And furthermore, it predicted future events that wouldn't happen until hundreds of years after certain words were penned, most important of which being the incarnation of Jesus Christ, his coming to the world, his death, and his resurrection. And that is the, the key to our faith even. And the fact that we know that Jesus Christ came to the world we know that the Bible is credible. How do we verify the credibility of the Scriptures? Uh, because there, there are some complications. For instance, in the New Testament, it's probably more complicated with the New Testament because the climate of the early church was very difficult. Lots of the writings that they had, lots of the monuments they built, the churches and the people were persecuted, oppressed, destroyed, killed. That made it very, very hard to track the progress of the early church just by looking for archaeological evidence. Now, the Old Testament, on the other hand, well, that was written at a time when Israel was in its glory, when it was prosperous and strong. And because of that, you're able to find lots of these old monuments as described in the Old Testament. The archaeology gives a lot of credibility to it. So we have a lot of evidence for the Old Testament, but it's hard to find a lot of evidence for the New Testament except for one stunning reality. Jesus is perhaps the easiest person in ancient history to verify his existence of anybody, not just of the people inside the Bible, but of anybody throughout all of ancient history. Jesus is the easiest to confirm his reality. How do we know that? Well, he's mentioned in, uh, in 
texts outside of the Bible that date back to shortly after the time of Jesus' ministry on earth. We see that the New Testament writings themselves, most of them were written within a 50-year span of when those events actually happened. Now, you might be asking yourself, 50 years, that's a long time. Well, compared to a thousand plus years that often separated <laughs> events from being recorded in history uh, during those days, because you would have something significant happen, and the historian wouldn't really write about it. It exists in oral tradition, but it wouldn't actually be written about until 500 to 1,000 years after it actually took place. And so we know that the Bible was written very closely to the time that the events actually happened. It kind of flies in the face of the old saying that I've heard skeptics say that the quickest way to lose your faith is to read the Bible. I can grant them some, uh, a, a little bit there, because if you read it out of context, and you cherry pick a scripture here and cherry pick a scripture there, and you, and you just pervert the meaning of it, then maybe you could come up uh, with some reasons as to why not to believe it. But if you read the Bible from the beginning to the end, you'll be amazed to see the incredible consistency and the wisdom throughout the entire book. It does not contradict itself, and you're able to see the transitions from the New Testament and the Old Testament, uh, and you're able to see the prophecies played out and fulfilled in writings that happen 100 plus years, 500 years later. It's a remarkable book when you really read it from cover to cover and grants itself credibility in that regard. The Bible is far too credible to destroy our faith, and in fact, it will even strengthen your faith if you take the time to really dig into it. So what does this have to do with us? What does this have to do with uh, my life and your life? Well, the best way for you to have credibility throughout your life, your Christian walk, is to read the Bible and let it transform your character in your life. That's what we got the Bible for us, for transformation. That's what Jesus did for us, transformed us from an old creation to a new creation. And the Bible helps us along in that walk. Which reminds me of an old saying, a sports saying. You can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? Very important thing for us to reflect upon. And uh, to communicate the credibility of the Bible, you must be a person who lives by its values. Jesus did that perfectly. He paid for our imperfections, and his credibility validates the very message we have. Now, I think I'm running a little bit long here, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up with a quick illustration. And it has to do when I was certified uh, in scuba diving, actually, uh, out in Long Lake in Lima, Ohio. Uh, my dive instructor's name was, was G. Mertz. He's since passed away. Um, but he's a man that trained my father, my mother, uh, and a few of my brothers in how to scuba dive. And so I trusted him very much as he was training me and this small group of people. Now, I didn't know this, but when you go down underwater, there's a bunch of things that can happen to you. You become claustrophobic because of the equipment you have on. You can become cold. You can, and one of the things I had problems with is with the pressure crushing down on my eardrums. It really hurt a lot. And uh, on one of my first real dives to the bottom of Long Lake, uh, what happened... I started to panic. It was cold. It was overwhelming. I was feeling claustrophobic. I felt the pain closing in my ears, and uh, I didn't know what to do. Well, my dive instructor was nearby me, so what I did is I took a hold of his hand because I knew that he'd been in this situation many times. He had the credibility that I needed to get me out of this situation, to, to bring me back to where I needed to be. What do you do when things get scary? What do you need, do when you need guidance? We need to take the Bible in our hand and learn what God has to say about every situation that we encounter. Please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time to read your word, to dig into your word, to learn from your word, Lord. Lord, we thank you that your word is true and that you give us credibility that we couldn't have on our own. So Lord, we praise you for the fact that we have a book such as the Bible to learn from, to grow from, and to get to know you when we read it. We praise you for that, and we pray that we would take it seriously as we dive into it every day, as we grow closer to you in our relationship. In Jesus' name, amen.